So, Usyk and Dubois are going to be fighting tomorrow. I decided to wait. I actually had a prediction video I made like two or three weeks ago that I'd recorded anyways, but I just, I didn't want to release it until close to the fight, and I think my views of the fight anyways have updated slightly since <clears throat> then, you know, with the weigh-in having occurred, having me seen a little bit of training footage, the press conference, whatever, maybe little minor things I picked up here and there that I thought would be a little bit better described had I just scrapped that and made a video after it, so... Yeah, Usyk and Dubois, the fight nobody asked for. Why is this fight happening instead of Usyk Fury? Well, it's very simple. Because Frank Warren has two or three Queensberry fighters in line for a title shot. D Daniel Dubois and the winner of Zhang vs. Joyce are going to be the mandatory challengers for Usyk should he retain his belt beyond Hergovic, who is next in line after Dubois, assuming Fury does not fight him. Now, what this effectively means is that Basically, uh, if if one of those guys is hypothetically to dethrone him, not Hergovic anyways, if one of either Zhang Joyce or Daniel Dubois is able to dethrone Alexander Usyk, it makes an in-house undisputed fight between two fighters under the Queensberry promotional banner very easy to make. There is not many promotional barriers, there's no network barriers, and... The financial situation is pretty much settled because they are paid according to how Frank Warren likes to pay his fighters. Uh, whereas Usyk and, or, or should I say Krashuk and Frank Warren likely value themselves at a different price. And also the fact that, or value Usyk anyways at a different price. And also the fact that uh, if Dubois, or if Usyk is to get past those fighters... Age, uh, time is not on his side. He is continuing to age further. He's picked up, you know, injuries here and there from uh, putting on muscle, uh, which is actually something I'll get into in regards to Daniel Dubois a little bit later on in this video. But nevertheless, it's 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 something to consider: wear and tear, age, losing a step in regards to speed and reflexes and stamina potentially. Uh, those things could all work in Tyson Fury's favor, being the bigger man that he is, and being the fact that he hasn't taken a whole load of wear and tear beyond those Deontay, uh, Deontay Wilder fights. So, in that regard, it kind of pans out pretty well for Queensberry if they're able to, you know, get through on this, which means I don't think an Usyk Fury fight is at all likely to happen after the Dubois fight. If it does, good, but if it doesn't, uh, don't be fucking surprised. But, yeah... How do I see this fight going anyways? We all know what Usyk, his style of fighting is. We all know what he brings to the table, what he's achieved, blah, blah, blah. Look, Daniel Dubois, as far as what I think of him as a fighter, which is, I think, I guess more relevant considering prior knowledge as far as Usyk goes. Daniel Dubois has beaten guys like Kevin Lorena. Although that fight was a little bit bizarre. Some people say it was fixed. I wouldn't be surprised at all. He's fought guys like Joe Cusimano, who's since established himself to at least be a decent heavyweight. He beat Kavnatsky. You know, you, he's beaten Nathan Gorman at British level, so I guess at worst he's beyond that. He's, you know, European level. And, and he's beaten other guys. He took Kevin Johnson the distance early in his career, but came through that fight. He fought Joe Joyce, which is the main, most notable and most significant fight of Dubois' career thus far to this point by far. How did that fight work out for him? Not particularly well. I remember after the fight, I actually picked Dubois to win the fight, but I remember after the fight thinking, you know what, in hindsight, he probably performed pretty well when you consider uh, his lack of experience relative to Joe Joyce. He did, you know, hang in and was competitive in that fight. But Joyce was able to comfortably outbox him. He showed him a lot of feints in the center of the ring, and he was able to make Dubois tentative, busted up his eye socket, and made him quit. Uh, Kevin Lorena was able to catch him on the temple himself. Richard Larte, by the way, was able to catch him on the temple and hurt him, but Kevin Lorena was able to uh, catch him on the temple, and some people say it was an ACL tear, but you know maybe it could have been a knee injury, but honestly, I don't really believe it. Uh, I think... I honestly think... He had, maybe it was a knee injury, but I more so think it was 
the fact of him being discombobulated from being caught from a temple shot. Because if it was a torn ACL, he would not have fought this soon. Even though it might be nine months after that fight, uh, torn ACL prognosis is, can last up to a year. And if that's the case, and if he goes through an injury that significant, he gets the surgery, whatever, he would have probably had a tune-up fight by now. Uh, he would not be in this position. And in order for him to even be fit to box after you know rehabilitating from something like that, uh, he probably wouldn't have come back anyways until about November or December. Plus the fact that an, an injury as excruciating as an ACL tear, he wouldn't have been getting down on his knees as much as he was after that, to be fair. So, you know, I, I'm not really too sure about that. But he did get caught with a temple shot in that fight. <sighs> Am I really too sure if that's going to be replicated against Usyk? And am I therefore going to read into it that much? No. Uh, but he's been hurt numerous times to the temple. It could happen in this case. I don't know about early on in the fight, but it could happen. But what I can gather anyways from the first minute or two of the fight before he got hurt is the fact that Lorena being a southpaw, the first southpaw of any note anyways that uh, Dubois ever fought, was showing him a lot of feints, was holding his ground in the center of the ring, was showing a lot of variance, uh, was not picking up his feet that much either, but was, you know, keeping an active guard, <laughs> giving him different looks, and Dubois froze. Dubois is supposedly, as he's going to say, going to approach this Usyk fight very aggressively. He's going to go boss to the wall. You know, he's going to try to rough him up. He says he's going to win by any means necessary. He says he's willing to get rough to win the fight, and you got to pretty much rush Usyk to win. Uh, I don't think that's going to work for him in terms of being able to actually land clean, effective work. Uh, but what I will say is, if he does try something like that, if he does get reckless, considering Usyk is not going to punish him and, you know, be as lethal as somebody like a Wilder or Joshua who can just catch him on the way in, you know, if, if he's to attempt tactics such as, you know, that. Uh, I could see that posing a relatively difficult physical fight for Usyk. I could see it being a fight where he's forced to exert himself more early on than he would like. There's obviously a chance that Dubois could land something fight-changing, head or body, because he can punch. D Usyk is somebody who doesn't seem to have the best body resistance. He's been hurt to the body numerous times in his career. Uh, but he does have a phenomenal chin. He very rarely gets hurt by shots over the top. He did momentarily in the 12th round against Bradis, but he very quickly recovered. He got caught with a big left hook against Gassiev, quickly clinched, and reset his feet and was back to normal. He got caught with a big right hand in the 10th round by Joshua, you know, when he was himself a little bit winded, but he immediately recovered and went back to work. His chin and his powers of recovery are tremendous. I don't think Dubois, or I don't think it's really too possible for Dubois to be able to land something too significant and fight-changing, especially if he's attempting to pressure, where the distance covered... Uh, between his punches and therefore the power and leverage on the shots is going to therefore be reduced. Uh, Usyk has shown against more natural pressure fighters, fighters with lower centers of gravity, and in my view, quicker feet when coming forward like a Chisora. Uh, he's shown that he can cover up very well against the ropes. He can defend very well against straight punches, uh, hooks, overhands, you name it. He's extremely good at shelling up against the ropes, has a good defense, uh, great chin. He's just a great all-around fighter. Uh, I looked at the weigh-in, too. Usyk was typical Usyk, about 220-odd pounds. Uh, Dubois was about 233 pounds. Now, do I think Dubois might be a little bit naturally physically stronger than Joshua? Uh, yes. Usyk was able to muscle Joshua around and break clinches by shoving Joshua off himself. Joshua was not able to impose himself extremely effectively in clinches. How good is Dubois you know, in clinches against genuinely big uh, opponents or how good is he in the clinch in terms of being able to you know use his free hand to work and create for himself uh, on the inside while being smothered I really don't know and I don't think that's going to work in favor of him and I don't necessarily think he'll be able to get on the inside and just outfight Usyk because not only are his feet not quick enough but I don't even think he's really uh, proven enough or good enough or experienced enough on the inside to be able to do that uh, this is genuinely the type of fight where Dubois' chances rely on a puncher's chance. Uh, Usyk, if he's able to come out near the center of the ring, if he's able to make Dubois hesitant, if he's able to freeze him, make him kind of kind of hypnotize him anyways with the feints, and 
make Dubois hesitant, try to draw him into a chess match. If he's able to get, you know, lead foot position, circle Dubois early, and therefore gain lead foot position and control him in the center of the ring, the fight's basically over, unless Dubois can land something fight changing. If Dubois can close distance, you know, and whoop him on the, you know, maybe try to whoop him on the inside and try to smother him a little bit and, or throw haymakers, he could physically, I won't say intimidate, but he could garner the respect of Usyk early on. Or if Usyk is hesitant early in the fight, has respect for him, or maybe a little too much respect, Dubois could force his way into the fight and be able to nab a few rounds against an inactive and generally slow starting Usyk. But if Usyk starts quick and is able to control the center of the ring, as I stated, and force Dubois back, or at the very least force him into a stationary fight in the center of the ring, the fight is effectively over. Um, Dubois has a puncher's chance in this fight. You know, maybe he can set up and create opportunities for better work if he's able to get to Usyk's body a little bit early on. But personally, I think this is, uh, this is Usyk's fight to lose. Uh, Dubois has shown that he can be made to doubt himself. Uh, one thing I will say about this fight, though, is I do think he will show up a little bit more mentally determined and a, a, a little bit more, with a little bit more perseverance and, I think, willingness to go out on his shield and, and ride out the storm, if you will, and persevere through adversity. Because in this fight, unlike all of his previous fights, he really has nothing to lose. The consensus is that he's overmatched here. Boxing-wise, I mean, pretty much every attribute apart from his size and his power, he's largely significantly overmatched, and he's never been tested at this level before. And he's fought even at a level before this and gotten outboxed and lost. My pick is Usyk, probably by late stoppage. Wouldn't be shocked if it went to points. And hey, Dubois can land a fight-changing shot and maybe stop him. You never know, it's possible he can land a uh, unpredictable, perfect shot, because at the end of the day, it's happened before. You know, Paul Williams took bigger punches, pu uh, bigger punches from bigger punchers than guys like Sergio Martinez. And what happened when he fought Martinez in the rematch? He got caught with a perfect shot. So you never know. But I don't see Dubois winning in this fight, and I don't see too many routes to victory for him because of how many areas that he's overmatched in, and the fact that Usyk, being as physically strong as he is, I don't think he can just be overwhelmed on the inside by Dubois in the same way that Chisora was able to, who was around 250 pounds himself. And even Joshua was bigger physically anyways than Dubois. And I'm not really sure Dubois has the type of infighting ability to, to be able to take Usyk, you know, to be able to overwhelm and nullify Usyk's style of fighting. Do I think pressure fighting is an effective way uh, to beat Usyk? Depends on the fighter. Uh, you have to really be a great pressure fighter. You have to be able to be masterful at cutting the ring off. You have to have quick feet, cut the you know, cut the distance extremely quickly. You have to be also defensively very sound before he's able to crack you, and g garner your respect before you get close. So you know you have to have a tight defense and you have to have a good chin. And Gassiev didn't bring that to the table, despite the fact that he's more or less a pressure fighter. Chisora didn't have the stamina to maintain the pace, and he wasn't able to really land significantly. He wasn't sharp enough. And most of Usyk's rivals at heavyweight don't really ha have great pressure fighting games, and that includes Dubois. Dubois might have looked effective as a pressure fighter in certain instances, but against guys who conceded the center of the ring of, against him instantly. Uh, Joshua isn't a pressure fighter. Wilder isn't a pressure fighter. Fury can pressure, but he's not great at it as far as his footwork and ability to cut the ring off. So Usyk... You know, attempting to bum rush him and close distance quickly against him, you can only really do effectively if you're a masterful pressure fighter. Because if if you do, and uh, you don't have the foot speed or the stamina or whatever, you're going to be made to pay for it. So I got Usyk. Round 9.